Hey, hello there. Um, this is this episode is actually best enjoyed while watching the accompanying video, and that's of course I've put a link to that. And the reason for that is we're on location as usual, but this time we have a couple of special guests, and uh, as you can see, a couple of pigeons. And I mean, usually my conversations with pigeons are reasonably private. I sometimes talk about them afterwards, but I rarely let people tune in to the actual conversation while it's happening live. So, well, of course, this isn't live for you, but it's live as I'm speaking. And so we're here with the pigeons uh, for various reasons, for safety reasons. They're not giving me their names and or addresses, but we're sort of basically talking about how they've seen the city over the last uh, few months. And... Um, let's say Pigeon Darker informed me that it's been pretty rough because the thing is that pigeons are incredibly adaptable. You know, when circumstances change, they adapt very quickly. It's not necessarily fun, but they can do it quite uh, easily. And in the case of the COVID-19 situation, the sudden drop in tourists led to a lot of hunger amongst uh, pigeons. Uh, pigeons often have a rather bad reputation. People call them flying rats. Well, if they were flying rats, I believe they would look like rats with wings. Bats, for example. But no, these are pigeons, and they are not, you know, they clean up a lot of our mess. I, I have my favorite spot, uh, Steiger 14, Pier 14, and during the regular season with lots and lots of tourists, then, for example, on a Saturday morning, Sunday morning, uh, it is absolutely filthy and it's full of gulls and pigeons cleaning up what they can. And um, that suddenly, that profession, you know, I mean, lots and lots of pigeons were laid off from cleanup duty because there was nothing to clean up. And that led to a, a lot of political tension amongst the pigeon groups. Um, I mean, there were even, according to non dark pigeon, there was even discussion of should pigeons really put the pressure on us and make it clear that they need food and we better do something about it. It turns out they thought that wouldn't be a good idea given the fact that humanity has such machinery if we wanted to there would be no pigeons in Amsterdam at all. So that was I think a wise move but also sad that pigeons see us you know in that uh, particular way that you would hope that we share this planet together, the pigeons see us as, you know, not necessarily friends. I mean, I don't have any love for pigeons, but I don't see them as enemies. So uh, there's that. Then um, other stuff, they say that they too have noticed they've really had the chance to look at the city because usually they'd sort of be flying around and down below they'd see this mass of dark and uh, heads, the hair and color, and they couldn't see the roads. And they actually love looking at roads. If there's, you know, remember you used to have carrier pigeons where pigeons were sent on missions to do things. And the reason for this, this is what I've just learned today, is that actually pigeons not only have a natural GPS system, they have a, a natural mapping system and they absolutely love mapping. But the best way for a pigeon to map for their own particular reasons is to map an empty road. And you know, at night, well, visibility is low and pigeons, yeah, they're not nocturnal creatures. So they loved doing that during the day. So they've got a whole new set of maps of Amsterdam taken during the COVID-19 period. And these maps will become available when? Okay, over the next six months. So, um, you know, I definitely, once those maps are out, uh, and uh, accessible, I will definitely put a link. But for now, um, yeah, we're just enjoying the company of these pigeons. So uh, aside from the mapping, there have been a few other things. They have said that uh, this food issue has affected the whole bird situation. So, for example, gulls, who can be aggressive, we all know that, but there have been certain gangs of gulls just harassing pigeons all the time. Because the thing is that pigeons see food faster than gulls do, okay? Not fish, that's the gulls' business. But anything on land, pigeons actually see it faster than gulls. And you know that gulls, even though they're sort of chickeny, but when they're together, they're quite aggressive, you know, like a gang of gulls. And so they watch the pigeons, pigeons find food, gulls move in, poor old pigeons, 
really hungry for that uh, part of the day. And that really isn't uh, fine. So they've mentioned that. They've mentioned there have been a few uh, more hawks and uh, that kind of bird. Um, uh, they call them angry birds. So they not the game, of course, but they say there have been a few more of those coming around. And, uh, and they say that um, they have entered a new uh, sort of... Uh, level of cooperation with rats. Rats also are creatures who generally get a bad name, but it seems that the pigeons and rats have entered a new level of cooperation, but exactly what it is, they, these two pigeons will not tell me. So maybe I pick up, uh, I'm gonna, I've got my ears open. It could be that I pick up information quite soon. When I do, I will pass that on to you. So that was um, just a very brief little pigeony interlude. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye because we're now going to have an off-record conversation, so I cannot tell you the contents, but it is going to be fun. So until the next episode, um, if you're listening to this wondering what's going on, check out the video. You will see the pigeons. You will see them. I've slowed them down so you can see their every move. You can perhaps see pigeons in a way you haven't seen before. Who knows? Anyway, until the next episode...